So as promised, I'm going to show you how to you could integrate some of this stuff into an existing uh, patch that we've looked at, the additive synthesizer. Um, so I'll go to file and uh, open. So um, not going to not going to change anything to do with what's up here, but um, we have our oscillators down here. Um, so if I double click on that, we can go back into our main oscillator window, and um, I'm going to add uh, an input to our selector, which is going to become selector 5. So it's going to be 5 inputs to there. Um, and I'm going to uh, now where should I go? Okay, I'm just going to take this for now and add that to our selection of oscillators. So I'll pop it in there. And of course then I need to change the um, U-menu object so that it will have a, an, a, an additional input for that. So we'll put in a table. Actually that's not particularly descriptive. But never mind, it'll do for now. You could choose something perhaps a bit more descriptive. Um, so now we can choose that particular um, uh, oscillator. What I also want to do, let's go back into here again, is I want to, um, well, where I'll put all the, the rest of the gubbins elsewhere in the patch so that we can let's put that in here. Oops, not that. So all of that, that stuff, the buffer, the means of controlling it, can all sit within this patch here. But of course I want this to, um, to update whenever I change the, uh, the wave, waveform shape in here. I want that to update in the... Uh, you know, uh, as as far as cycle that's referring to my wave is is reading it. So I need to send the appropriate message to the cycle object. So I will send it to um, table cycle. And then of course I need to receive for that. So in case that didn't make sense, <coughs> I've now, of course, got a means of whenever I change this uh, this wave, uh, the, the shape in here, um, the, the the output from here, which is just telling us where the selection starts, but it will send any data whenever you change anything within the table. Um, all we want it to do is to be a trigger. So that is setting, you know, sending the set my wave message. Um, via the send object into this oscillator uh, sub-patcher and just up reminding Cycle that it needs to look at my wave again um, and update it. Um, so that should, that should do it. That's actually all I need to do as far as that's concerned. Um, and uh, so now hopefully if I choose, well if I choose sign Okay, that's worked. Has it? Has it worked? Hang on. No, it hasn't. Let's turn this down. There we go. Um, so that's just using that sine sine wave on the first oscillator. Sawtooth. Turn down a bit. And now we can go to the table. And of course now this is being affected by the amplitude envelope that we uh, that we put up here. So, but. I can obviously change that waveform. That will always be updated as I wanted it to be. So that's worked okay. Let's check the time. We've got five minutes. Um, one other thing, though. Of course, I've changed this uh, series of oscillators in this subpatcher object, but the remaining os oscillator subpatches remain as they were which might be all right. 
But if you wanted to change all of them so that they had this, um, uh, I suppose, user-defined um, uh, wave form in them, um, you'd have to go through and laboriously add uh, the cycle object with my wave in it plus the the receive object to uh, to get that uh, table cycle message um, in there. Uh, so that's maybe not ideal. So what I'm going to show you now is something which you will I'm sure you will find very very useful um, if you are duplicating a number of sub patches or you want to duplicate a number of sub patches. Um, this will make life a great deal quicker and easier for you. Um, and that is to make what are called abstractions. And what abstractions are, I've already, I think, if I remember rightly, um, suggested that you can think of these patcher objects as being patches within patches or sub-patches or your own uh, bespoke objects, if you like, that you've made. Um, but these patcher objects are always saved with your patch when they uh, your main patch which is this one X in this case when the patch is saved uh, they belong to that patch and so they couldn't be referenced by any other uh, patch you'd have to kind of copy this into them but the idea with what are called abstractions is that you essentially make an object that can be called by any uh, patcher so if you make it so you know make, make a patch with a uh, a function which could be you know, very useful in a variety of different patches, then you can save it in an abstraction and um, and then, as I say, access it from from other patches. And the the concept is fairly straightforward, and so is the implementation. All I need to do with this, and I suppose I ought to save this as something else because I um, don't want to mess up this patch. So I will call it um, three and five. What I want to do is if I go into this subpatcher again, I'm simply going to, you notice that oscillators has these square brackets around that. That denotes that it is a subpatch. And I'm going to go into file and I'm going to save as. And you notice that it comes up as oscillators. So it's not trying to save this main patch, it is trying to save this subpatch, which is exactly what I want. And so I will save that. And because I've saved it to the same folder, and this is important, I saved it to the same folder as my main patch, my main patch can access it and reference it. So now, if I, um, I can write in oscillators. So I don't need to put in P, I don't need to do anything, I just put in oscillators. And because it's saved in the same folder as this um, main patch, when I um, release, or when I initiate the object you notice that it comes up with as as its own you know with all the inputs that I made for this P oscillators object and if I double click it then it goes into there I can't un unlock that in fact actually it still has the square brackets around because it's it's uh, it you know it, it recognizes that it is a it is still essentially a sub patch within this patch um, I can't modify this sub patch okay so I can't unlock the patch whoops can't unlock the patch. I can't do anything with it, but it is there, and I can, I can make multiple instances of it. So I will. In fact, it's easier for me simply to get rid of the P here, which will make that an oscillator's object, and I can do the same with all of them. And you will notice that once again to remind you, when they were sub patches they didn't have the fifth inlet to the selector object plus all the other paraphernalia. Um, when I change them to the oscillators object, they do. Um, so obviously this is a great deal more efficient way of um, doing all of this. The one problem is, of course, that the U menu objects which don't belong within this oscillators object, and I want them not to belong in them because I want them to be a user interface a device. I want them to be available in the main patch. Um, I they, you don't have access, to it, so you have to uh, change those independently. So that's not quite so elegant. But um, uh, I can't remember what I called it now. Uh, table, I think I called it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, go into there. Change that one. 